I think social security is a good thing. I like it and also health insurance is free in Germany. Um, it's actually not. You pay about 20% of your gross salary into social security. What? Well then, social security. We progressed quite a lot over the last two weeks through this sheet of confusing numbers and mysterious abbreviations called payslip. So let's speak about the biggest deduction from your gross salary today, the German social security system. Some even say it's the most efficient social security system in the world. Why? Because all contributions are automatically deducted from your payslip. You're not sure how to read your payslip? Check right here. The German social security system stands on five pillars, but you're only paying for four of them. Lucky you! Let's find out what you're paying for and what you're getting for your money in this video. What's up everyone, welcome to a new video from Perfinex, the number one financial planner for expats living in Germany. We believe that financial education leads to financial success. That's why we upload easy to understand videos on all topics of personal finance every single week. And since there's no better time to take care of your financial future than right now, subscribe to our channel and reach out on WhatsApp if you have a personal question. We're here to help. Last week we talked about how much income tax you have to pay. And if you think 500 euro in taxes was a lot, well, today you'll see that you pay almost twice as much into social security. If you are employed in Germany, you have to pay into social security. There's no way to get out. If you are self-employed or a business owner, you can choose if you want to pay into the system or not. If you ask me, I'm a business owner and I quit out of all social security years ago. Why? I'll tell you at the end. Why are employees forced to pay social security? The government says employees depend on being able to work for a living. Which is true for most of us anyway. So the government wants to protect you by automatically covering you with all five pillars of social security. That's the nice answer. The not so nice answer is that social security, like taxes, are a pretty important source of income for the German state. Social security pays in case you get ill, lose your job or get old. Taxes pay for infrastructure, police, our education system. I know a lot of you experts come here to study because it's free. The truth is, it's not free, because everyone pays taxes. Like public health insurance is not free, because employees pay into social security. And that's the basic principle of our social security system, solidarity. You pay for everyone else and everyone else pays for you. You pay for the generation before you and the generation after you will pay for your generation. And everyone who is insured contributes with a certain amount that depends on how much you earn. The more you earn, the more you contribute. However, everyone receives the same benefits. So very similar to income tax if you remember from last week. The difference between taxes and social security is that for social security there is a maximum contribution. So after a certain salary your pay is free of social security and social security is mostly 50-50 paid with your employer. So Heinz, you're actually not paying 20% of your gross salary into the system, but 40%. If you don't like it, you can complain to this guy. That's Otto von Bismarck, the guy who invented the German social security system in the 19th century. Looks to me like a guy you don't wanna mess with. All right, let's look at the five pillars. Health insurance is there to protect you in case you get ill and need treatment from a doctor or a hospital. Its purpose is to prevent diseases, promote health and restore health in case you are already ill. Employees who earn less than 62,550 euro gross in 2020 
and 64,350 euro gross in 2021 are forced to be insured in the public health insurance system. Employees earning more or self-employed people have the freedom to choose if they want to be insured in the public system or in the private system. You only need one health insurance, of course. I know from consulting you expats that health insurance is one of the biggest topics of interest for you. That's why I will dedicate a whole video to it, two weeks from now, that will compare the two systems. So if you are eligible to change, you can make the decision that is right for you. For now, let's just say that Heinz with his almost 5k gross exceeds the maximum salary you have to pay health insurance on, which is 4,687 euros and 50 cents per month in 2020. If you are watching from the future, this number will be higher. It will be 4,837 euros and 50 cents per month next year. So Heinz would still exceed the maximum. That's why this year and next year his public health insurance contribution is capped. Every month he has to pay 14.6% of his gross salary for public health insurance, half of which is paying his employer of course. On top of that, every public health insurance charges an additional contribution that ranges between 0.3% and 1.5%, depending on their efficiency. That's a huge range. So just by changing from one inefficient public health insurance to an efficient public health insurance, Heinz could save 675 euros per year. That's pretty good. Now, all of these numbers don't matter if you are in the private health insurance system, because no private health insurance premium is bound to your salary. You just pay according to the benefits you want. But more about that in two weeks. Next on the payslip is the public pension. Even though Heinz reaches the maximum gross salary he has to pay public health insurance on, he does not reach the maximum for public pension. Because that's 82,800 euro gross in 2020 and 85,200 euro in 2021. That's why he has to pay 18.6% of his salary into public pension. Again, half is paid by his employer. What do you pay this for? Well, the Deutsche Rentenversicherung wants to make sure that you will still have a regular income after you stop working. Wait, wants to make sure? Yeah, according to the Deutsche Rentenversicherung itself, the average monthly pension payment in 2018 was 1360 euro. That's 1520 euro for men and 1106 euro for women after paying at least 35 years into the system. And these numbers are before deductions. Of course you have to pay public health insurance, long-term care insurance and taxes on it. That's not really German efficiency, is it? But don't worry, there's private pension schemes that you can enroll in that first of all give you a meaningful return of your money more than 0% on a bank account at least, that's for sure. And second of all, give you tax benefits and state bonuses. So private pensions can be a nice way of saving money. But more about that next week when we talk about the three levels of our German pension system. Pillar three of five is the unemployment insurance that will pay you unemployment benefits in case you lose your job. Not if you quit yourself. How much will they pay and how long will they pay for? It depends how long you paid in. If you want to know more about the German unemployment insurance, let me know in the comments. What we do know is that employees have to pay half of 2.4% of their gross salary into the system. Pillar 4 of 5 is our long-term care insurance that's part of the health insurance. So if you are in public health insurance, you are in public long-term care insurance. And if you are in private health insurance, you are also in private long-term care insurance. Both give you assistance in case you need care services to support your daily living or need to move into a nursing home. You pay half of 3.05% of your gross salary into it, plus 
a quarter of a percent extra if you do not have children. That's the government telling you, you should get more kids in order to keep the social security system running. That's right. Social security is fundamentally a pyramid scheme. It only works as long as more people pay in than people taking money out. Where's the last pillar? Well, it's not on your payslip, which means it's free, right? Right. Because your employer pays it in full. It's our accident insurance that pays for accidents that happen to you on the way to work, at work and straight back home. How many accidents does this cover statistically in Germany? About 25%. The other 75% of all accidents in Germany happen in our spare time, where the social security accident insurance won't pay anything. So if you want to receive benefits there, you have to get a private accident insurance. And that's a good summary of our German social security system. The government takes care of some of the stuff for you, but you might want to or have to take care of some things yourself. And that's why we're talking next week about the German pension system and public versus private health insurance after that. At the beginning of this video, I told you that I quit out of all social security insurances, right? Here's why. When our social security system was invented in the 19th century by this guy, the world was way different than it is today. We had a lot more young people than old people and old people were dying earlier. The world has changed. And now we realize that social security is basically the biggest pyramid scheme ever invented. It only works until more people pay in than people getting money out. Oh, and pyramid schemes are also illegal almost anywhere in the world. And rightfully so. And I decided that I don't want to participate in this pyramid scheme when I had the freedom to opt out. I have private free market solutions for everything with for-profit insurance companies that actually have to be conscious in the way they spend my money. Not like the German government that is wasteful with your money and spends more than they earn. If you are looking for private solutions as well, either as an addition to social security or as a replacement for social security, let us know in the comments or text us on WhatsApp. See you next week when we examine one of the biggest expenses of our government, pensions.